and good afternoon yes we are back back again with some more x-plane um, back again carrying on one of our journeys around the world and this time something a bit special uh, not only my first time uh, flying the um, fly j sim uh, q400 legacy which i've just had an interesting time trying to start which is why i'm not going to tackle it again uh, live on stream um, but uh, i'm going to be uh, mentioning throughout the stream today a bit of a competition uh, that starts well now uh, and ends in two weeks time if you're watching this live uh, if you're watching this on youtube then ends on the 16th of february a uh, chance to win a 65 pound just flight voucher um, all you need to do is uh, go to the discord server competition rules are there uh, basically the world's simplest competition take a screenshot uh, of an airplane doesn't have to be in a flight sim obviously this is designed to get people into flying that aren't already so take a picture of an airplane in a game so it might be in grand theft auto it might be in uh, truck sim it might be in train sim uh, a nice picture posted in the competition section with a bit of information about it that's it and uh, 16th of uh, february when we're back on this stream in two weeks time we'll announce the winner so £65 of just flight vouchers. So you can buy X-Plane, you can buy FSX. If you've already got a flight sim, you can buy airports, planes, whatever you want. So a pretty awesome competition. Uh, afternoon, Sam. So anyway, here in the Q400 Legacy and about to leave where we got to last time, uh, which was here at Gambella and making our way up to Khartoum. So continuing our journey uh, around the world and uh, heading that way. What's the destination after Khartoum? Well, we'll find that out in two weeks' time. I'm joined then on this flight by the man uh, blocking my way, uh, one of three people blocking my way, actually, in front of me, and uh, that is Chris. Good afternoon, Chris. Good afternoon, Steve. And uh, what plane are you flying, sir? I am flying the Fly Sim Dash 8 Q400. Well, that sounds familiar. <laughs> Indeed, just a little. Um, and in front of Chris, in something that looks remarkably familiar as well, is uh, Roxy. Good afternoon, Roxy. Good afternoon, Steve. And uh, so what plane is it you are in? Yes, I am in the same one. Excellent. So that's three of us then flying a the flag for Fly Sim. And down the end of the runway there, I think we must smell, is uh, Mr. Kazariah. Good afternoon, Gaz. Good afternoon. And uh, what plane are you in, sir? Caravelle. Oh, very nice. Um, so, as Gaz is facing uh, towards the runway we need to be taking off on, which is that one, uh, after you, Gaz, and we'll attempt to um, taxi our way down. So, first time for me in this plane, so I've just gone through the start-up procedure, and, which wasn't that complicated, um, but we'll have a look around it properly when we're in flight, um, but so far, very, very impressed with it. I only purchased it last week in the Fly J Sim sale. Uh, as did Roxy, I think. Um, yep. And a couple of others from the Discord group purchased it as well. Um, but uh, yeah, quite impressed so far. Um, taking off taxiing going to be interesting. But um, yeah, really liking it. The FMC, very simple to set up. But um, we shall see how it goes. I am rolling. So is Roxy. So is Chris. I'll give him a little bit of room. Okay, parking brakes off. I don't think I've ever flown this before. Oh, that sounds quite nice. <laughs> but it sounds nice. Yeah, she needs a little bit of welly. There we go. Just don't forget, don't pull your throttle back all the way when you want to slow down. Yes, otherwise going to reverse. Which, to be fair, would slow you down. It would. Oh, 
I do like the sound. Now, I've been really getting into jets the last uh, few weeks, but I do like the sound of a good prop. And two of them, even better. And two of them with scimitar blades on. Hmm. All right, Gaz is lining up in what looks like a 727. On my screen, it looks like a DC-10. Or something like that. Well, I can only see it by distance, so I just saw three engines and got excited. As one does. As one, well, indeed. <laughs> oh, this thing sounds nice. I'm going to say it. I'm, Sam's not going to like me for this, but I'm going to say it. I think it sounds nicer than the Saab. Oh, yes. But, I mean, it's... Bigger engines, six-bladed scimitar props. I mean, you know, you just can't be. On the downside, it's a really ugly plane. It's a bit long and thin. Indeed. It's the Stephen Merchant of uh, <laughs> aircraft. <laughs> Chris is managing a feat on my screen, so to speak. He's about 20 feet off the ground and his props are not moving. That's a good trick if you can do it. Lots of practice. Yeah. Uh, White Fang, good afternoon. Well, I think I'll, I'll take off then, I guess. There appears to be... <laughs> the runway looks really bumpy from here. Oh. Yep. Okay. Right, don't go into reverse. Don't go into reverse. Don't go into reverse. And we're off. Right, Gaz is taking off. Don't Hopefully. make me buy this, says. <laughs> says what? I tried yesterday. It's very nice. In there, I've gone for a Qantas livery. I couldn't think of anything else that might have been close to where we are, so I've gone with Qantas. A little bit away from home, but you know. I went with Olympic. I figured we're heading in that general direction. So Gaz is uh, barreling down the runway. I'm up. You've chosen Just... to no longer work Sundays. That's a great choice. I haven't worked Sundays for 20 years. I have no intention of working Sundays. Right, yep, Gaz is in the air. Roxy is taxiing out. I love our FS Cloud takes a plane and gives it a dose of Viagra. Oh yeah, it just drags along the ground and then pings up at the end. Oh, that sounds quite special. Okay, so uh, exterior lights, taxi lights can go oh, off. Those lights can go on. Fasten seatbelt sign is on. Emergency lights can go no, um, uh, no, armed. Apart from that, I think we're all good to go. There's some switches and knobs up there. I'm going to ignore those. The RGM had me doing everything on my own from 1.15 to 3 the other day. Wow. That's not very long. Alright, waiting for Roxy to depart then, and we'll... Uh, there we go. It does look odd when you see a, a prop plane departing with the props aren't spinning. <laughs> There's absolutely no way this sounds better than the Saab. Clean your ears out. I, that, that starting noise on the Saab, I must admit, is nice, but... 
that's quite special. Approaching three, six. We'll give it some flaps. And we'll make our way out. We got a fair amount to do. Ah, that's not so good then. On runway three six. Right, so Rox is in the air, Gaz is in the air. Chris is in the air. Okay, so let's do this. Wow, that's a bit of a flipping neck that accelerates quick. Sure does. Blimey, Charlie, I didn't expect that. Yeah, props at low altitude will, generally speaking, uh, kill a equivalently powered turbofan. It's just when you start getting up, you know, above six, seven thousand feet, the, the turbofans become much more efficient and the props lose them. Okay. Right, gear up, flaps up, that was quite easy. And it's looking nice as well. Oh, press F12 then. <laughs> Steam habit. <laughs> right. So I've pressed the uh, MCL. Now it's over in the climb. You'll see that it'll have adjusted your throttles and your props. It's like push button flying it. What's that you're flying? A Q400 from uh, Fly J Sim. My first time flying it. Alright. Nice. I'm speeding. Oh, it's 250 knots below 10,000. Oops. And a mountain in front of me. Right, 3,600 feet. I mean, I was a lot higher than I am. climbing at 700 feet a minute I'm climbing at 1,700 yeah I need to increase that then there we go I wasn't climbing very fast Really like this plane. Uh, initial impressions for me, it's quite nice. Yeah, pretty quick as well. I'm doing 275 in the climb. All right, that's better. Coming up on 5,000 feet. Bombardier Dash 8 Q400. Uh, that's who makes the real ones. Yes. Fly J Sim. Yeah, we all bought it um, last week because it was on sale and we've got no impulse. We've got no impulse, we've got no. Um, uh, what's the word? Restraining powers. That's it, yeah. <laughs> I 
which is still actually really cheap, still only $30. Um, so yeah, that's the one I'm flying from, uh, from Fly J Sim. And uh, initial impressions, very, very nice. Six thousand five hundred feet now. Uh, Paul, good afternoon. How are we doing? Yes, those you just joined. Details going across the screen of the competition we got running, uh, which ends on the sixteenth of February, to win a sixty-five pound just flight voucher. What you need to do to enter is post a picture, a screenshot of a plane from any game. Um, in the competition section of Discord. That's it. As simple as that. So in all those lovely things on the Just Flight um, store uh, that you can buy for um, that amount of money, including X-Plane. So you can, if you haven't got X-Plane, uh, you can buy it. You can even buy X-Plane 11 plus the Aerosoft Airport pack. Uh, that is the one, yeah. It's a 61.99. Um, as well as lots of uh, add-ons so you ended up buying X-Plane uh, lots of planes you can buy um, lots of airports you can buy for that sort of money so uh, do whatever you like with it so huge thanks to a uh, an anonymous um, donator uh, for that awesome prize so if you're watching this on YouTube uh, competition closes at midday on the 16th of February the winner will be announced on the stream uh, on the afternoon of the 16th shame I can't enter otherwise I would be And the winner is me. And the winner is me. Because <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's plenty I could spend that on, I can tell you. Um, right, so here's Chris. Uh, there's, how do I get in front of Chris? Uh, there's Chris, there's me, there's Roxy, and there's Gaz. And over there, we've got snow. <laughs> Just to our right, there is snow. So holding out about 255 knots now, just above 10,000 feet, but climbing quite nicely. And yeah, level of detail in here, oh, I didn't see that lot, is uh, very nice. Well, it's an ILS approach, isn't it, to where we're going? So. Let's tune uh, 109.70. There you go, nav one is tuned to 109.70. Yeah, I do like that noise. That is quite nice. Managed to get a plane on FSS nicknamed Beluga. Uh, designed on the Beluga. The Beluga's, um, they've done a, as an XL version of the Beluga now, I think. Because um, it, it wasn't big enough, the original Beluga. So there's an even larger one. Right, so look in the back then. While we're climbing, we've got plenty of, yeah, we've got 13,000 feet. Is there a door or have we got to be uncouth and just walk through it? It's a pretend door that you have to kind of just go through. <laughs> ah. I thought it'd be a door I'd have to open then. Okay, we'll just walk, we'll just walk our way through. The, oh, there is a cabin. Okay, it's not the best. Um, but this is an old plane. It's not a new plane for Fly J Sim. They are working on a new, a new plane. Um, but that's not bad. A lot better detail up here, which is the important bit. All right, 14,000 feet and climbing. 
So where are we on the route? Let's have a quick look. So following the route quite nicely. So uh, up to here towards Axot, and uh, 299 uh, miles that way, and then turn 138 miles and into. Uh, it shouldn't take too long. Time we get up to altitude. Well, we've got ground speed, uh, 311 knots ground speed, so it's almost um, sort of prop, not prop, almost jet speeds. Slow jets. Yeah, the only place it really loses out is the 25,000 foot ceiling. If you climb higher, it could go faster. But at 25,000, is just a bit slower than something like a 737. Yeah. But I should imagine a lot more economical. Oh, yeah. Tons more economical. So it's quicker to accelerate. It's more economical. It sounds nicer. Um, just a little bit slower. Yeah. The thing is, when you start getting to more than 400 miles, that little bit slower starts adding up. Ah. But look, I was trying to win the advantages of prop flying here over jet flying. Well, I mean, 400 nautical miles or less. I don't think you can beat this thing unless you want to carry more than 78 people. And you know. Does that, do any of us know 78 people? No. So why would you want to do that? There you have it. I think I could probably fit the people I know in a single decker bus. Um, why bother, Stephen? Says Sam. <laughs> he doesn't like it. I'm dissing jets. <laughs> hey, I'm not now. The 732, also from Fly J Sim, not sponsored by the way, um, is awesome. Sam's been flying it this weekend and loves it. So do I. So I'm not saying I'm you know I'm all props. But I'm saying there are advantages and disadvantages to both. I like uh, I like mixing it up. <coughs> I actually thought of saying then, <laughs> but then realised it was actually a saying. I was about to say I'm by plane, but that is, that is actually that is actually a thing. <laughs> I, I don't mind I don't mind jets or props. <laughs> Nineteen thousand feet, still climbing. Yeah, yeah, says Sam. <laughs> the bottom line is that this plane is in the same class as a as a ERJ one forty five. You know, it's the same type of plane, just happens to have different way of propelling itself. Okay, so similar passenger carrying capacity, similar range, but... Yeah, similar speed. I, the APU might still be on. <clears throat> so at least you won't fly any batteries. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, I thought it's I could a, hear like a jet noise. I thought, what's that jet noise? I looked up, the APU was still on. Yeah, you'd think I might note that in the checklist or something, wouldn't you? You'd think they'd write, that, written that what down. What does that mean, Chris? What? Check <laughs> checklist. Checklist. Is that to make sure you've got to take a list with you or something? Yeah, to make sure you've got a list. Shopping list? Yeah, similar. Although I, I went out with a shopping list earlier with six things on it, forgot one of them. <laughs> was that one turning the APU off? <laughs> yeah, it was. It was on my shopping list this morning. <laughs> well, ah, who needs bread anyway? You know, unrelated, um, I watched a video by Flight Chops on the Yelchops, and he was interviewing a pilot in a Cessna Citation uh, as he was flying, but that's irrelevant. Mm. And he was explaining about the time he had a bit of a technical difficulty on a flight. It was, I think he was doing some sort of medical flight or something. And basically, both his engines cut out and they wouldn't restart, and it was about 30 miles out of the airfield. And it was an incredibly long story, 
Um, but basically, he went through all sorts of stuff and calculated glide slopes, thought, yeah, we'll make this, it's okay, it's all good, wonderful. Told the passenger, says, we've got a bit of a problem with one of the engines, it's cut out, so we're going to divert to this airport that's nearby, right? Um, and then he discovered that both, that's when he discovered both had cut out, couldn't restart them and stuff. And he told the passengers. Anyway, carried on, you know, emergency procedures, blah, blah, blah. Everything wonderful, descended down perfectly. Uh, and then he lost his altimeter when he was in the clouds. Uh, he lost all concept of altitude. He had an emergency altimeter, but managed to get that restarted by turning the power off and back on again, which is what made me think of this story. Um, and then he landed, and he says it was a fantastic landing and everything. And of course, he, he came to a halt on the runway. And air traffic control says, uh, will you be taxiing to the gate? And he says, I don't really think so, because both of my engines have failed. You see, that it, it was obviously handed over to them, and it's just down as an engine failure, not a complete engine failure. Oh, blimey. Anyway, <laughs> apparently he got out of the plane and went straight for his, got his lunchbox out the back of the plane, spoke to the passengers, and they were like, why, why are we staying on the runway? <laughs> and he's like, because both engines have failed. Not really. He didn't tell us. Turns out that when he told them initially, uh, when he, he told them initially, um, then there was a, a rapid decompression scenario, so he had to lose height, or something went on with the air pressure system until he got it sorted. And in the process of doing this, their ears all got bunged up and didn't pop because um, of the change in air pressure. So the second announcement where he said, we've got no engines, nobody actually heard it. Oh God. And apparently they were like, my God, how did you stay so calm? Because they could see him in the in the cockpit. Mm. And it looked perfectly normal. You, it says you're just looking at gauges and pressing buttons like you would normally do. You didn't look panicked at all. Oh, the idea is not to yeah. panic, because that's when things can go wrong and you can miss stuff exactly. and die. But I thought it was, you know, it was quite quite a, a tribute to his piloting skills, obviously. Yeah. Being able to land perfectly, 20 miles with no engines. But anyway. So there you go. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Stefan, yes, hello. Uh, doing well, thank you very much, and thank you for the follow. Okay. Uh, right, so I pressed the little button now. I've got into the cruise, MCR. So the throttles have done something. Oh, the prop pitch has come back. Lights, camera, action. Oh, speaking of lights. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Should turn the uh, landing lights off now. So yeah, twenty-four thousand feet in the cruise, holding at or uh, well, speeding up actually two hundred sixteen knots, three hundred eight ground speed. Coming up towards the turn on a very so I think it does let it down. Is that FMC looks? It's just so blurry when it's popped in, doesn't it? Pop it out, perfect. Thirty-seven miles. from uh, Axotti and then 299 miles and 138 miles see I suppose pilots are trained for the engine fail but they're normally trained for one engine fail. although in a single engine aircraft you are trained for it and yeah. working out um, your speed based on how far you've got to go so what descent rate you've got to have and it's just be it staying calm is the key thing, isn't it? And going, okay, mm -hmm. it's fine. The plane will glide. It's designed to glide. Um, if I maintain this descent altitude, we'll be fine. The only thing is, I suppose, if if not, wouldn't be good if you um, came in and were told to go around or something. Yeah. <laughs> Although you you declare an emergency landing, wouldn't you? But yeah, quite bizarre. Yeah. The passengers thinking mm, engines are quiet. <laughs> <laughs> Now in the in the small stuff during the training, you're basically trained to be always on the lookout for somewhere to land in case your engine goes out. Ah, uh, okay. Obviously, there's less of a problem in a jet where you're up high and then you've got some time to choose. But in a mm. little single engine low down, always looking for somewhere where you can land a road or a big field. I suppose certainly, well, you, you're in a four-engine jet aircraft, you know, it can fly on three without a problem. Um, you just lose a bit of speed, didn't you? 
um, and they probably would fly on two without a problem. But when you've got a two engine aircraft and you lose one, things are a bit, a bit more difficult. Um, yeah, it makes you want to go around in circles because you've got all the thrust on one side of the plane. Yeah. Uh, and in a single engine aircraft, you're screwed, basically. This is sounding definitely does sound nice. So Chris is there behind me. Rox is out there in front of me. Gaz is somewhere in front of Roxy. Still accelerating slowly, 242, 243 knots. It's almost like having an auto throttle, isn't it? Because you don't do a thing. 240 yeah. knots? Yeah. Oh. We're going a bit faster than that. So, what about the descent then, Chris? Does it work the other way around? So, for descent, do I then press MCL? No, leave it in MCR, and basically you'll click IAS, and it'll hold whatever your current speed is, and then just pull your throttle, just not too far. Okay. <laughs> and then it'll just descend, and you probably want to keep about 1,800, 2,000 feet per minute descent. Where are we flying today? Flying to Khartoum uh, from Gambella. So this is where we currently are. So if I zoom out, um, that's where we are. So made our way from the UK uh, quite a while ago, beginning part of last year, uh, around the southern tip of uh, Africa, made our way back up through uh, Madagascar, heading up to Khartoum today. Um, before heading on um, eventually back towards Dubai um, and up through then uh, India and then the eventual aim is to come down to Australia um, across Australia um, down to New Zealand back up through Indonesia the Philippines uh, Japan uh, southern bit of Russia uh, through the bit next to Canada um, and down to uh, the west coast of America. So it's going to take a while. Probably another year or more of uh, of flying uh, in various aircraft from stuff like this that's props to uh, jets and um, smaller props as well. So depending on where what the flight legs are and where's interesting to go to is uh, you know it depends on the plane we're flying. So uh, various aircraft and one of the three round the world trips we currently got going on. So we're approaching the turn up here now. And yeah, speed holding steady at pretty much 246. Crossing the border of Ethiopia. I think that sound is certainly, for me, it's a nicer noise than a jet. It's just got something about it, a bit like being on a ship. Um, on a sort of out on the ocean, you've got that just constant drone of a ship's engine. It's just really, really relaxing. Hopefully, not too relaxing. <laughs> well, no. Good night. <laughs> yeah, if you hear some snoring, <laughs> just shout really loudly. So 
So yeah, if you've just joined, uh, details at the top of the screen of the competition we've got running until the 16th of February, uh, where you can win a £65 Just Flight voucher. And all you need to do to win it is take an awesome screenshot uh, of a plane in a game and uh, post it in the competition section of the Discord server. Rules are in the Discord server, um, in the competition rules section, um, but not many of them, to be honest. So check it out. Annou a winner will be announced two weeks today if you're watching this live or uh, on the 16th that afternoon if you're watching this on YouTube. So plenty of time to enter. <laughs> Do you want to bury the knife in any further or what? I won't forget this slander, <laughs> says Sam. <laughs> I, I'm not dissing Jets at all. I love the Zebo. I love the 732. It's awesome. Um, I'm just saying that this noise is quite therapeutic. It's quite relaxing and just that nice drone. It's just something about it. Yeah. Particularly when you can feel the vibrations of your subwoofer as well. Uh, well, I can't. So the headphones on. Uh, too late, says Sam. Nope. <laughs> Sam's not <laughs> buying it. So you don't like the Saab, is what you're saying, Sam? level of detail in here oh no apart from that bit where the fuses are oh, it's not bad side window demist oh it's not clickable they are working on a new version uh, let me bring up the um fly j sim page again so not this is sponsored or anything um i paid for the aircraft So uh, yes, they've got a new um, a new plane coming. Fly JCM Q4 XP, um, which um, I don't know when it's coming. They said it's uh, it's a little way away yet. It's in very early development, um, but um, yes, that's going to be another step up from this. So uh, looking forward to that. We'll certainly check that out. Um, it's looking. Uh, rather nice from the screenshot it's got an abby tab thing going on in it over there as well and uh, yeah looking good so we'll check that out when that's out hopefully later in the year cool curious why oh, have you changed change direction yet Steve yeah oh you have no it seems to be on a slightly different route to us yeah uh, oh yeah I'm pointing off at a bit of an angle you're going bare left Gaz is on a different route again he's going sort of direct almost yeah, you're heading towards Sudan Yeah, I got my flight from um, Simbrief, though. As long as we end up in the same place, which, I've, well, it says runway 36, so we should do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it looks like you're heading straight for Yamsat. Just 
just cutting a little corner, nothing major. Yeah, it's fine. I'm impressed with how easy now, considering how scared I was of an FMC uh, a few months ago, how easy the art is set up. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, this isn't. A, I haven't got my speed um, on here, but um, yes, yeah, so we've got 264 miles there, and then 138 miles we've got to send to 12,600, 2,900, and then down to 1,300 feet. Um, so I'm guessing now I could decrease my altitude ready for top of the seven can i or is it actually going to follow i don't know where it's today so it's getting to trust the plane now isn't it so if i decrease my altitude here is it going to hold twenty four thousand, or is it going to start descending oh no that should hold it until you click either ias or bs no it's descending are you adjusting it on your panel yeah yeah, that's probably why. If you adjust it in the plane, it'll it won't um, start descending until you push one of the buttons. That's okay. At least your panel works, eh? Yeah, that's fine. I can just descend it. Just click it on the panel. Is everyone, of course, you've all buggered off on a different course now. Well, I've buggered off on a different course, so I'm all by myself now. Oh. <laughs> Don't leave me. Um, so, yeah, I've, I'm now on this course here. Uh, Roxy and Chris have gone off on a tangent over here. Gaz is up there. So, we're all taking different courses, different routes to the, to the same place, it would seem. Well, hopefully, the same place. Yeah, hopefully, the same place. This is the route I've taken. They seem to have gone a bit. They've got to that same waypoint. They've gone more left than I have. Um, but hopefully then they'll come round. Do you go to OBD? Yeah. So yeah, yeah, that's our next one after this. Yeah, so we'll both meet up at the same place up here. Anyway, I'm just taking a more direct route to it. So, uh, yeah, there, there, and then in on runway 36. into cartoon so ground speed 350 knots holding quite nicely in the cruise at 252 knots a little bit bouncy up here I didn't take the seatbelt signs off did I? more passengers are probably sat waiting for a pee oh too late Seatbelt signs off. Make sure there's nothing I haven't turned on or off. No, we're all good. So it won't automatically descend when it gets top of the. Actually, will it announce top of the descent? Probably won't. Um, should be in. If you put an altitude in your FMC, it should tell you when to start descending. So mine after him, so that I've got a down arrow, two and a half degree descent. Guess what that is, yeah, two and a half degrees. Now descent. Okay. It'll be fine. What can possibly go wrong? You do a fly around? <laughs> yeah, or crash into a mountain. <laughs> I think we're quite safe on the mountain front out here so far. 
so far. Don't want to speak too loudly in case this gets overheard. But we eventually have quite decent weather for a change. Oh, don't say that. Jinx it now, we're gonna get snow or something now. Typhoon. <laughs> yeah, probably. We shouldn't get much bad weather now, really. Well, that's what we all thought when we headed for the Caribbean, eh? I just, that's true. Well, you, you sort of get sort of um, typhoons and stuff like that out there, didn't you? So, but this sort of neck of the woods, where we're heading now, I suppose India gets rain and... Yeah, okay, ignore that. So where's the next step after this, then? Where's the where's the flight? Have we, have we posted it yet? We've got Wednesday's flight posted, haven't we? Yeah, Wednesday's posted. The next one after this will be up to Luxor. Okay, nice. So yes, if you know flights uh, next weekend, um, we'll be flying this Wednesday, and then the next stream after that will be the following Wednesday. So uh, nothing. Uh, nothing next weekend we're fortunate on YouTube the weekend this goes live but then back to normal uh, flight schedule going forward and YouTube schedule Shut off, elevator trim shut off. There's lots of buttons. Thankfully, none of them are illuminated, so that's probably a good thing. <laughs> where is my, I did put fuel in, but where is the fuel? Let's have a look. Uh, spoilers. Uh, battery. See where your um, engine de gauges are yeah. in the bottom centre. Oh, here we go. Yeah, four thousand eight hundred ninety-five pounds in each one. There we go. That's cool. So over there we've got electrics. So flaps are up. That's always a good thing. It's bizarre yeah, how they can make those displays look crystal clear and absolutely readable from any angle, yet they can't do it at the FMC. Well, it's because it's the default X-Plane FMC, isn't it? It is indeed, but the weird thing is in every other plane it's crystal clear. Yeah. Very strange. Doesn't detract from the uh, flying experience, mind. Indeed, I've got mine popped out on my second screen, so I don't have to look at that one. Oh. Look at you popping it out. Everywhere I can. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm really impressed with it. There's what, $20 in the sale? Which is technically free. It's just a nice plane to fly. Yeah, I've got a Dash 8 that I think I've ever flown. Um, along with the CRJ that I think only flew once. Because it just it was just so naff inside that I didn't bother flying it, but <laughs> but I really like this. You know, covering good ground as well. You know, 350 knots. That's not to be sniffed at. It's only about 60, 70 knots slower than a jet would be. So here we are in uh, 
FS Cloud. So Chris and Roxy heading that way, me heading this way. Uh, Gaz out in front, we're heading up to here to Khartoum. Um, so I'm going up here then there. Chris and Roxy are going up there, up there and up there. So we're all going to hopefully end at the same um, the same place. Well, that's the aim. Um, but we'll all get there at a slightly different times. So uh, a staggered uh, arrival. And yes, if you have just joined, uh, welcome. Um, there is a competition running that ends on the 16th of February uh, to win a £65 Just Flight voucher. And it's all you need to do uh, to win that voucher is take a screenshot of a plane from any game. It doesn't have to be X-Plane, doesn't have to be a flight sim at all. So it can be a plane in uh, GTA, can be in um, ETS2, can be in whatever. Uh, take a nice screenshot, post details of why it's special, what makes it so good. Um, post them in the Discord server and a uh, winner will be picked and announced on the 16th of February uh, on the stream. So uh, very easy uh, competition to enter and hopefully one of many good prizes we've got coming up uh, this year. So uh, do keep an eye on uh, streams and videos. We'll see if you're watching this on YouTube and you've still got plenty of time to enter. Unless of course you're watching this after the 16th of February. Uh, if that's the case, uh, then uh, yeah, check out the Discord for uh, information on upcoming competitions. Normally announced there first, as it was uh, this morning. Details are put in this morning before the live stream, um, so you can enter there. But yes, nice and easy, and um, yes, just get those nice arty screenshots. You know, if you're taking one in X Plane, then early morning or early evening looks stunning in uh, X-Plane, so the right plane with the right background um, and uh, yes just something that will make us go wow, that's what we want so uh, check it out, details in the competition rules section on Discord, Discord linked in the chat um, and that's it very, very simple and have I bought Navigraph yet? Not yet Sam I don't know if I'd use it. That's the flight charts one, isn't it? So the approach charts and stuff. Is that Navigraph? Yeah, it's got the nav data and charts, both separate. Yeah, I don't know if I'd use it. So I use it on all of these airliner flights. Yep. I I'll tell you what, though. That uh, £65 voucher, you wouldn't be able to put it on the hat shelf in the Duchess because that says maximum £50. <laughs> you have to do it in two. You have to put one on the seat next to you <laughs> and one on the hat shelf. <laughs> and the next pane 11 hits C on the keyboard for free cam. Indeed. Yeah, when you're doing 354 knots ground speed, your plane disappears rapidly when you do that, though. What's the, um, what's the flyby one? Like, I never bloody remember. Shit, you have two. That is quite special. I really like this plane. <laughs> you wouldn't need the charts, just the FMC data, which is £27 for the year. But why would I, why do I need it? What advantage is it going to give me over what I uh, do now? Up to date nav data. So when your sim brief gives you a, a SID or a star, you know you'll have it. Ah, okay. But I have to say the charts is really useful because it comes with the moving map thing, which is incredible. Yeah. I use it all the time with the Abbey Tub app. Oh, I think they make me spend more money. This, this flying thing is an expensive hobby. I 
Damn you all. I'm blaming Chris the most. I'm tough, I can take it. Out of anybody, you maybe spend the most money. Um, it updates all your planes, little nav map, and active sky. Oh. No, I mean, oh, I, that's not good at all. <laughs> oh, Juan's um, been uh, playing with uh, painting and he's gone all carbon fibre. That actually looks quite nice. So yeah, so we'll have to look at some more uh, skins for some of the planes. Because every time I get a new plane, it'd be hard work. I might have to look at doing some skins myself. How hard can it be? I use GIMP free software, just like Photoshop. Paint.net is also free and a bit easier to use than GIMP. It's pretty oh. nice. You should try it. Cool. I blame Chris mostly, but Steve was the main culprit yesterday. There's no evidence of... Oh, yes, there was, wasn't there? There was evidence of that. It's surprisingly easy. What, to do skins? Because now the um, Sims and stuff livery is just back to blue. I think that could be quite simple. Oh, the charts and data is cool, says Sam, but a massive jump in price. I will, uh, I'll have a look at it. else I need. I need to, well the ground seat, the um, the Sam scenery thing that does the jetways, that works now. Um, weather I've got sorted. Graphically I think it's looking really good, going pretty much back to stock X-Plane, so that's sorted. Um, I've got the SFD Global for the scenery and airports where I want them, so that's sorted. The only thing is, which I think Sam did download, I don't know if you've ever mentioned, is that um, taxi thing. It's having something that will show, certainly on larger airports where you need it, is helping you navigate taxiways. I have one no, called either. Airport VS. Also, the Navigraph charts, if you've got the airport chart up, you can see your plane and visually plot your route on the chart uh, yeah. which I normally use a little nav map but that's not that's just showing me the, the shortest route not the correct route but yeah okay uh, oh jump in viewers if you've just joined uh, welcome uh, indeed uh, details on screen uh, for the competition we've currently got running which ends on the 16th of February uh, to win a 65 pound just flight voucher all you need to do to enter the competition is post a screenshot of a plane from a game in the competition section of the Discord server uh, with a reason for why it's great, why you think it's an awesome picture. And uh, winner will be announced two weeks today if you're watching this live on the stream on the 16th of February. If you're watching this on YouTube, um, you've got a week or less to post your picture in the Discord server. As simple as that. And one of hopefully a few awesome, um, uh, I can't think of it, flight based uh, competitions we're going to be running this year, although a few others hopefully coming up as well. So check it out. A link to the Discord server is in chat and below the stream. Uh, post a picture um, in the Discord, as simple as that. Oh, well, how do I join your Discord again, please? Uh, below the stream. If you're, if you're watching on a PC, just scroll down. There's a link to Discord, or it's here in chat, uh, which I can actually put a thing to. There we go. And there's a link to the Discord server. 
Yeah, Steve, I've got the airport VS on my um, Discord stream. Okay, uh, just join that. Oh, okay. So basically, this is it zoomed in, so you can decide where you want to go. You then switch from airport to taxiways. So let's say I wanted to go into ramp three. Click on there. Click on here. And then I'm going to probably, because we're coming in on runway 36, so I could probably make it off this one here. Click accept. And then I can zoom out. So I'll come in runway 36, go along, come off here. Obviously, this is a simple airport, yeah. but if you was looking at, um, let's say, Heathrow, uh, E-G-L-L. -L. No, it's a lot more complicated. Although, not really, when you break it down, if you're looking at it like that, actually, it doesn't seem too bad. Yeah, exactly. But obviously, it depends on where you are and where you're going. And if, especially if you are using ATC and they tell you to go to somewhere, you can try and find it. Like if you wanted to go to ramp, you know, 363, is an example, and then you can plot a route from there to wherever uh, you're going. So yeah, it's it's quite handy, I guess. Okay. But you can obviously set your origin for where you are before you take off. Yeah. Um, set your destination and set an alternative um, and then they're there ready so as soon as I get into um, where we're going to it's going to be ready for me so I know that's where I'm going to head off to yeah okay so yeah I'll have to check it out and look at you with your G GTN 750 in the corner <laughs> yes <laughs> Hmm, I'm not even going to go there with that. <laughs> another thing I'm going to end up with at some point. Uh, you took another job, hence you've been quiet. Ah, not a problem, Paul. Work gets in the way of life sometimes. Right, so here we are. So there we go. Roxy's made a turn now. So Chris will do soon. So heading up towards the same waypoint that I'm heading towards. So it all should regroup up here. And uh, Gaz is uh, getting closer to Cartoon. So if we pop this out. So we're 134 miles from uh, OBD. And then 138 miles to go. So uh, certainly knocking through the miles. Well, white fangs up above us as well. Okay. Really? Yeah, it's near Gaz. Oh, yeah. Oh, there we go. White Fang's there as well. And then again, if you are watching, uh, we're always looking for new people to join us on these flights. Um, so currently, the regular two regular flights in the week are a Wednesday evening and a Sunday afternoon. Sunday afternoons we'll be carrying on the journey where we're doing here. Um, so currently going to Khartoum. The eventual aim, as I said uh, earlier, is to uh, then make our way round. I know it's you. Welcome to the flight. Uh, make our way round through India, uh, down across Australia, New Zealand, back up through Japan, uh, Russia, and back down to the west coast of the USA. The flight we're doing on a Wednesday night uh, currently sees us um, in the Dominican. Um, heading towards the um, American Virgin Islands uh, next and then back down towards uh, the mainland before we then fly down towards the Falkland Islands back up through the west coast of um, South America um, back up through Mexico to the west coast of the USA and then a flight we're not doing on a too regular basis um, is currently seeing us heading down towards uh, Moscow um, and we're going to fly from Moscow up through to Scandinavia um, and then across to the East Coast of America, uh, back down to Norfolk, Virginia, uh, where that flight started. 
But I think when we get there, we should really then fly across the USA uh, to San Diego, where the whole thing started for me in um, in X plane. So um, three round the world trips going on. Always looking for new people to join us on those. And the only thing you need to join is either FSX, X plane, or P3D, and FS Cloud. And FS Cloud is free. This is the bit of software that links all together. Uh, so we can see where, they are, where we are. Um, on the Discord server, uh, we post the flights that we're doing. So we have a flight plan section. If I can drag Discord in here, as I can. Um, so flight plans are posted. So here's today's flight. So going from where to where, the distance and uh, what sort of plane. Wednesday's flight is posted there as well. Um, that's what we're doing on Wednesday. And normally, hopefully about a week in advance, we'll then start posting the flights so people know when we're flying, what sort of plane we're flying, what the start point is, what the end point is. Um, and uh, that's the flights. And uh, also we do some multiplayer trucking uh, as well and um, post details in there of the trucking streams we do. So uh, there's a Discord server, all sorts of random things going on uh, in there, including some rather nice uh, flight chat with uh, some uh, pornographic pictures um, that get posted on a regular basis um, of various types of aircraft and uh, lots of flight conversation going on. So do check out the Discord. Uh, link is below the chat. And you're in an Airbus, Airbus A306. Okay. A306. Do one on me. And J Church Rider, good morning. So plane doing really, really well. Holding a cruise of about 248 now. Ground speed of 345. A 16 knot headwind. Oh, the Beluga. Oh, okay. That's why I didn't recognize it. Well, that's handy then. So if any of us crash, you can pick up the pieces. Because it's you know it's one of our flights, it's uh, likely to uh, end badly. But yeah, really liking the plane. First time flying the uh, the Q400, and it's uh, very very nice indeed. I do like that noise. See, that's not a bad picture. I think I'm going to have to find a uh, decent picture to post myself. How many has there been so far? Is it just the one? Yep, just the one so far. Which is rather nice, actually. Sam's posted a picture of the uh, 732 in an Air Europe livery, which is the first plane he ever flew on at six years old. So that livery, that plane rather nice uh, is this a new plane acquisition yes bought it in the sale last Sunday I think it was uh, when we were flying the 732 so the last three Sundays flights have been in fly J sim planes um, yeah, it was on their sale last week and so uh, so picked it up in the sale uh, for $20 however currently it's only $30 so which is uh, an awesome plane for the money Rather, rather nice indeed. So flew the Duchess for the first time in the video that went live on YouTube yesterday. Or last Saturday, if you're watching this on YouTube. This gets confusing. Uh, I've managed to avoid any credit card damage due to sales so far, says Tim. Yeah, unfortunately, Juan from the um, the Discord server did post a copy of uh, what he spent over this weekend um, in um, the .org store, thanks to us. And it, it was quite a lot of money. <laughs> and quite a lot of money spent through, uh, through January as well, into hundreds of dollars spent 
uh, on the X-Plane stuff. And until he became part of the, uh, the group, he hadn't spent anything. So we are a bad influence on people. Yes. We, we have no control. If someone shows us a new plane and it's under that, you know, because in, in bloke maths, anything under 20 quid is free, technically. Uh, so you show me something for X plane that's under 20 quid, I'll buy it. It's instantly, just, yeah, I'll have that. And it, it then becomes dangerous. Especially as I've got a birthday coming up and I've got I'll have birthday tokens to spend and I know exactly where they're going to go problem is I'll be away on my birthday I can buy stuff but won't be able to fly it till I get home that's it I'm out of here says Tim you guys are bad influences <laughs> don't join the discord server then you'll start you'll see pictures of uh, all the new things that people keep buying Yeah, I've, I've had a Q, uh, a Dash 8, sorry, for a while um, and never flown it. And it's only, I didn't even realise Fly J Sim did a Dash 8. It was only last week that uh, we were all chatting and then looked at their website and realised it was in the sale. I think two of us bought it instantly. And then Sam's bought the 732 because of us. Uh, Roxy bought the 732. Chris bought the 732. Um... I think there's been four or five of us from the Discord who bought the 732. I bought it because Chris told me to buy it. And he had he didn't have it at the time. So it all comes back to Chris, really. Damn it. <laughs> You're to blame completely. Uh, yes, if you are new, there is a link to the Discord server there. Uh, do check it out. It is an awesome community. Um, where uh, we get together... Uh, both virtually and physically uh, a few times a year. The big meet being uh, the Flight Sim Show coming up in October. Certainly uh, looking forward to that again this year, but a few more meets in between, including a trip to um, York, to the Rowan Museum. Um, going to be doing um, Convoy in the Park again this year, so the truck racing uh, event at Donington Park. That's going to be a thing. Uh, and going to organise something uh, in London as well at some point so uh, plenty of physical meetups as well as lots of virtual ones like these right 77 miles from OBD and these guys are heading towards it as well how far are you away from it Roxy I am second let me get back on here okay, oh, I'm 127 away so you must be about 102 101 so you're about yeah about 25 miles behind me then so that's not too bad so my route was slightly shorter. And there's Gaz up there coming into Khartoum and White Fang um, ahead of him as well. So when we get to uh, OBD, I think got 138 miles and then it's descend time down to uh, 12,600 feet and then um, 2,900 feet. Yeah, plane doing very, very well. Definitely liking it. Very long. I uh, don't get that off. <laughs> <laughs> I just like that noise. You're heading towards Charles de Gaulle. That's a bit of a flight from here.
to his place of burial. What, Charles de Gaulle? Was he buried at the airport? I only did my Southampton flight this year. I did that last year before I went on holiday. Uh, I flew down to the airport uh, about two miles from where I'm staying this weekend. Damn it, I've got time now. Go back and watch last year's flight. I flew over the place I'm saying. Reminiscing from school days where I got lost in Paris on a school trip. Yeah, I don't like Paris. Fuel wise, it's not using a lot of fuel. Four thousand four hundred pounds in each uh, in each wing. Colder in the, on the left side than it is on the right side of the plane. Yeah, I've got that as well. It's weird. Considering the sun's on that side, you'd have thought it'd be the other way around. nicely modelled in here. Oh, getting that sun coming through now as well, so it's making everything light up on the right hand side of the cockpit. It's like, mm. Nice and I've got an emergency escape hatch above me, just in case anything goes wrong. No my luck, I'd climb out the escape hatch, stumble to the right and end up getting chopped up by the propeller. <laughs> I'm free! Oh! Did I get my Twitter back? No. It's been since last Tuesday now. About four times I've, I've filled out the form and uh, it says, oh, I'll contact you in two days. Nothing. I just can't log on. I'm stuck in an ever in uh, ever recurring loop. It says, do you want to reset your password? Yes. Put your, you put your name in here. Click here. Do you want to reset your password? Yep. Yeah, put your name in here. Click here. Oh, do you want to reset your password? Yeah. Put your name in here. Click here. You just posted my play on Discord on the flight with the name White Fang. That's you. Wow, that's a damn ugly beast. <laughs> yeah, that's a uh, that's de uh, definitely a plane. The super transporter. Interesting, but ugly. Oh, it makes us feel a bit better about our dash out. So. Yeah, it makes me feel a bit better about being long and thin. It's different. I'm not going to say that much. Well, if, if it, fly, well, it is different. It's nice to fly something different. <laughs> but I suppose you, you want to be doing the route so that actually does, unless that's what you are doing. So it flies from uh, Toulouse to um, wherever else it is the airbus is put together. 
Right, not to make you want to buy the GTN, but just having a flip through some of the, the menus and it's got a bit on there saying the active VNAV constraints. So it tells me what my next flight level is, which I've inputted as flight level 100. It tells me how long until top of descent, how far, and what my VS target is, as well as the angle path. Okay. So I don't need to kind of sit there with my calculator trying to work out what to input on my VS. It actually tells me. I'm not buying that, are I? It does have charts on this as well, but only for America. For the rest of the world, it just has the airport information. Um, approach, uh, departure, and arrival information. So yeah, it's, it's pretty good. Uh, White Fang says, sounds similar to that 737-200. I think he flew that whistle all the way. Yeah, it's got a nice noise to it. And for me, for me, that's important in a plane, the way it sounds. Yeah, the way it sounds and the way it looks are important. Because you're sat in this thing a, a long time, so it's got to sound right and uh, the environment you're in has got to look nice and uh, for the money I think this ticks all the boxes so 23 miles from the turn and then 138 miles we've got to be down to 12,600 so I should be they're about 20 odd miles behind me so Chris and Roxy are going to come up from that sort of direction I mean, both intercept at the same point and then turn. So they've come a different way uh, to me. So they came along and then up. I've come uh, this way. So it's like we're both intercepting the same point up here. And then we'll turn heading towards Khartoum. And Gaz is on the ground. White Fang is heading towards uh, Charles de Gaulle. Currently at uh, 17,000 feet. Oh, you're climbing. 18,000. Yeah, I'm holding steady at 24,000. Ground speed of 24... No, ground speed of 341. Airspeed of 249. Is that the 18 knot headwind which is killing us, eh? Yeah. 21, according to the nav map for me. Hundred and sixteen knot crosswind in a seven three two says Sam. Wow. If flying at eighteen thousand feet, it seems quite low. Is did you use uh, sim brief or something for your flight plan? That does seem very low. Yeah, we're at twenty four. That's only because that's close to the ceiling height of this plane. How 
time I'm away. So seven miles away from the turn, which means sort of 30 miles over there somewhere is uh, Roxy and Chris. So they will appear. God, this thing looks nice. I've got an Air France plane 80 miles in that direction. Okay, we're about to make the turn. Is that you are OBD now? Uh, yes. Cool. So you guys can't be far behind me now. I'm 10 nautical miles behind. There we go. So 133 miles then to Radka. And then we start descending down towards Lagra. So yeah, Roxy's back there somewhere. 10 miles behind me. It's looking nice as the sun's going down. X plane just looks so great at the start and the end of the day. I've got a mist covering the ground all the way around me. It's lovely. Yeah, the ground's quite clear for me. It's a little bit hazy, but yeah, it does look nice. Okay, White Fang's just posted a picture of his interior with sunshades. Well, because you don't want to be too sunny. After all the sunshades, you get a bit bright in there, is it? final stretch now well ish so 138 mile stretch now if we bring in the flight plan uh, up to here and then a turn so we're going to go off piece at Radka I think and then come into uh, runway 36 at Khartoum so top of descent is uh, there just before we get to Radka start descending. So Radka's in 120 miles so uh, about 20 miles before that then we should be at top of descent. Um, which I don't know if we'll see on the... Um, I don't know I can zoom out. Can I zoom out on that screen? On my nav room? Is there a control like there is on the Boeing? Is that a good look? Um, it's just below the FMC. Uh, oh yeah. No, so it's not appearing on the display then. Okay. They don't actually do anything on FMS. Ah, I've got to turn it on to the right. Data, I'm guessing. FMS 1, is that the one? Yeah, I would imagine. No, it doesn't seem to. No matter what I do with them dials, it doesn't seem to do a thing.
yeah, nothing changes on that display, no matter what I do. Okay, well, we won't bother doing that then. Um, in about 90 miles then, we'll start descending. If you have a look at the progress page on your FMC, you'll see top of distance, top of descent there. Uh, nope, I've just got OBD to rank oh, Lacro yeah. HSS. Nothing on the right hand side of it. Yeah, hit the proc button. I did, I did. so I'm on. So you should have ODB. Oh, well, you'll be past ODB, so you should be MSAT, something else, HSS, and then T slash D. No. Down the left hand okay. side, I've got OBD to Radka, next Lagra, Dest HSSS. Then nothing in the middle, nothing on the right. It does say dist down the middle, nothing there. And on ETA, nothing under it. Did you put an altitude under Chris? Probably not. Oh, that's why. That's why. Uh, who just followed? Uh, XS Asawa. Uh, that's a name. Uh, thank you. You know who you are. Uh, thank you for the follow. <laughs> I don't put cruise things in. The FMC should work that out. Surely. <laughs> well, basically, when you get to Imsut, start descending there. It's about 20 miles past Imsut, it's top of descent. I'm not going to Imsut. Isn't that your next waypoint? No, nope, right there. No. Nope. Uh, okay, so you skipped Imsut as well. Yeah. Alrighty. I'm 102 miles from Radkirk. And according to um, Little Nav Map, anyway. Um, in about 80 miles, I should be descending, roughly. I would have said about 60 if you're 100 miles from Redka, but okay. I'm probably right. being conservative. Well, yeah, it's the first time descending the plane, so I'd rather be early than late. I bet you say that to all the girls. Hey! Yeah, I think this is definitely going to be uh, one of the planes in the regular uh, um, regular fleet. Easy to set up once I got used to starting the engines and what I was doing wrong with the um, condition levers and stuff. Um, and very easy to fly. Mm. Well, you haven't landed it yet. Well, yeah. <laughs> how, how hard can it be? <laughs> Um, at Radka, you want to be at flight level 100. At or thereabouts. Radka. Yeah. It's saying 12,600 for me. Uh, at or above, so yeah, that's at or above, I guess. Okay. I'll start descending at about 20 odd miles on. Have you got Borog? No, I go no. Radka, Lagra, da Dasan, that's it. Okay. 47. See, I'm 90 miles from Radka, and that's saying, yeah, 12,600. According to a little nav map, I'm nowhere near top of the tent yet. We'll wing it. As long as I get down to 12,600 by Radcote, we'll be fine. Oh, that flyby is so cool. Fuel wise, not using a lot. 4,085 uh, pounds in each tank. Oh, I see uh, Noel Phillips has flown into Lukla. From Kathmandu. I haven't watched it yet. I was going to say, it seemed to be the obvious destination from Kathmandu. Yeah. So that's one for later. Indeed. Did you see Steve O's new part time plane? Indeed. I follow him on uh, Instagram, so it wasn't a surprise. Ah. Uh, can FMC control autopilot or is it for a guideline? Uh, FMC in like the Zebo uh, 
was set up to control your speed uh, and everything basically so it will whereas this isn't controlling my speed uh, or my altitude um, I've got to do that myself it's controlling my route so it'll turn and follow these routes to go to these waypoints I'm controlling the speed and making sure that I'm at these altitudes but in um, in some aircraft like the Zebo, um, it will control your altitude uh, and speed as well so it'll do the whole thing so it'll line you up with coming back down at 1300 feet being lined up with runway 36 it will get you to that altitude um, lined up as long as you've done the top of the descent correctly um, and if you've got an ILS approach you can actually tune the ILS radio in and it will take you down to the ground with some aircraft not in every aircraft with every area with every aircraft but you know up until a couple of months ago I was scared of the FMC now bring it on apart from the one in the Airbus that still scares me <laughs> the easiest one of them all mainly because I haven't used it I've only I think I've only flown the Airbus twice once I had a complete failure because I had the panels on um, and then uh, once with help so I haven't actually programmed the FMC myself uh, again, if you just joined yes there is a competition running details are scrolling around on the screen uh, for you competition ends on the 16th of February uh, to win a £65 just flight voucher enough to buy uh, X-Plane or planes or airports or uh, whatever it is, is you require to get you uh, more into flight all you need to do to enter is post a screenshot from a game of a plane um, as good looking as you can uh, post it in the competition section of the Discord server uh, with a reason why that uh, screenshot or why that image is special to you and uh, a winner will be announced on the stream on Sunday afternoon on the 16th of February if you're watching this on YouTube then you will have a week to enter by watching this live now you've got two weeks so get thinking take that screenshot it could be something with a nice sunset in it it could be a silhouette of a plane like this or it could be as Sam posted earlier uh, the first plane he ever flew on in the correct livery as well um, so it could be something with a reason it could be something that just looks awesome um, all you need to do is post that screenshot in the competition section of the discord server and the discord server is linked uh, below the stream if you're watching live or in the description if you're watching this on YouTube uh, the, yeah, the easiest one says Sam and you'll be fine you pick up everything else just fine I think now now I've got the basic knowledge of an FMC and what information you need to put in them I think I'd be fine but then the only other one I'd used was the Zebo. so I think now I should go back and do an Airbus flight and just work my way through it um, what's Wednesday's there's a hop in it Wednesday um, so that's going to be something prop driven yeah we were we were discussing a fast uh, prop like a Mooney oh yes Mooney yes I haven't flown the updated version that could be a good one then and for those who don't have it something like a, a Grand Caravan or a Kodiak will do the job hmm and then uh, the following Wednesday then we'll put details up of what that'll be that'll be carrying on from there so no flights next weekend because I will be uh, away for my birthday 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 yes this time next Sunday I shall probably be sat in the uh, the pub on the site having a nice roast dinner use the length of this plane now actually looks quite nice no, I still think it's something that a six-year-old put together out from a ruler and a pencil <laughs> it's very <laughs> from above it's very just cross isn't it it's just like yep yeah, that'll that's a fuselage uh, there's a wing I stick a couple of airplanes on there uh, propellers on there and we're done <laughs> but no I, I, I'm quite I'm quite liking it The 
the landing is certainly going to be an interesting one. Okay, 49 miles from Radka now. Right, just don't forget to click the alt cell button on when you start your descent. Otherwise, it won't stop at whatever altitude you've got set. Yeah, uh, Paul, rather not here. Uh, as bad news as it is. Um, yeah, we'll check the news out. Thank you. So, yes, I will. Um, well, I've got all dark in here as well now. God, is there lights? Have I got cabin lights? They're around somewhere. Uh, you got. Oh, where's it gone? Uh, my screen. There's a. At the very. Um, in the center above your APU control, there's a dome light switch. Uh, done. There we go. Yeah, we'll, we'll check out the news after the stream or um right so we are 41 miles from obd so yeah i'm going to start descending i think so what do i need to be at 12,600 i'll just stick it on 10 because that's you don't want to be below that at your next waypoint. That's Being true. above that's fine. And if you're still above it when you cross, just then adjust it down to four. Indeed. All right, so on the way down, which means I've got to control, keep my arm with speed. Because it's not going to do that for me itself, is it, on the way down? No. I'm up at uh, 260 now. Lots of uh, twiddling of my uh, panel. <laughs> Changing it down. Right, 10,000 feet. There we go. So I'll bring the, bring the props back a little bit. And start our descent. Wow, that's looking nice. So we continue the uh, course. So yeah, 29 miles from Radka, uh, where we've got to be at uh, 12,600 feet. And uh, I might need to increase my vertical speed, actually. And then uh, 53 miles from uh, Lagra. Yeah, light's fading fast. Yeah, it's getting dark pretty quickly. There we go. Increased our descent rate. Speed's holding at 250 ish so we're all in the line now so chris is there roxy's there i'm there white fangs over there what happened to snow oh snow's still going on we've still got snow uh, snow in jeddah probably never happened <laughs> not one of the hottest places on earth jeddah around there isn't it yeah certainly that area is not cool no yes it's going to be hopefully got there's a light at this runway knowing chris it's probably a someone's mowed their back garden ready for us to come in yeah i don't think they actually got around to mowing it though uh no we've got edge markers threshold markers distance markers touchdown yeah oh, we got the whole thing going on it's Ashfell as well. Aren't we lucky? And that is getting really dark really quickly. 
I'm getting soft in my old age. You are. Now, there's got to be some panel lights here. I'll put a dome light on. There's got to be some panel lights. Right above the dome light, there's four rotary dials. Oh, yeah. Nope. Okay. Okay, not bad lighting, not the best I've seen. I think everything you need is lit. Well, yeah. Cup holder, yeah. <laughs> Everything's lit. The really weird thing is that I've got my FMC popped out on the other screen, and the lighting on the surface of that is changing with the light in the game. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah. So it's it's light, very weird. Lighting cool. it based on the fact that it's still in. Right, 18,000 feet, uh, 11 miles from... Uh, uh, destination. I'm going to increase that descent rate to 2,000 feet a minute. Back off the power. All right. uh, wow, gas. Uh, thank you very, very much. 12 months. That's that's almost a year. Wow. He said it's beginning of the month. So I lost 10 subscribers between last Sunday's stream and Wednesday's screen. Uh, scre screen? stream now Wednesday's scream was quite loud as you plummeted to earth <laughs> yeah actually I think Wednesday was quite uneventful wasn't it uh, that was um, well that was a video that went out on YouTube yesterday that was a Duchess flight yeah which is quite nice I do, I do like that Duchess but I've got too many nice planes that's the problem how do you choose between them all rotate through them. Yep, that's pretty much what I do. Of course, the favourites I keep going back to. Like having, Ooh, like having lots of kids. You would love them all, but there's always one that's just special. Vertical track. Top of descent in one minute. Thank you. Ethiopian Airlines plane in front of me. I'm get, nice. He's getting closer. He's landed behind me on the ramp. Ah, okay. Oh god, I'm turning. I didn't, into the stand that I'm I didn't expect to turn, but hey, I've, I've turned. It's a thing, it's happened. Fourteen thousand feet. So I've set it to ten. So Roxy's behind me somewhere, and then Chris behind him. Holding a nice 257 knots. Ground speed of Light's fading fast. Like one minute is blue sky and lovely sun. Now it's like, oh. Yeah, mine is basically pitch black now. Just a little orange streak on the, on the uh, western horizon. All right, 10,000 feet. Then 
and live it out. Thousand feet is achieved. Bring the speed back up now. All right, put landing lights on. Oh, there you go. I see a Roxy behind me. I'm coming for you. Run away. <laughs> Run away now. <laughs> right, 36 miles from Lagra. I need to be at 2,900 feet. So I need to descend again. Albeit slowly this time. I do like the fact that it's more hands-on this plane then. Yeah, you've actually got to do something rather than just sitting yeah. there and doing nothing. Like a Zebo, you can pretty much, as soon as you're taken off, you don't have to do anything until you've landed. I pretty much it with a Zebo flying for me. I take off, put the autopilot on and don't turn it off again until I'm about 50 foot above the runway. And then, yeah, just don't do anything, you just sit there. Obviously checking instruments and things. But yeah, I do like it that you've got something to do. Right, so descending down now. Bring the power back down again now. I'm descending again. Then you, <laughs> you're doing it wrong, says Sam. I knew there was going to be some comment. Uh, I once forgot to turn the landing light off. Woke up the next morning to 577s and assessed at the top of the stairs. But um, tish, the old ones are the best. Well, it's pretty much, Sam, in the, in the Zebo that um, once you're at top of climb, you can then set your descent altitude and then you haven't got to do a thing. Which is great for just to get into A and B, um, but I do like the fact that you've got to do something. Oh yeah, the, the 732 does keep you busy. Yeah, this plane also gets a bit busy on the final section. I don't know if you still got that text file I sent open. Uh, if you have a look there. I've got suggested speeds and flap settings as you come in from 16 miles out. It keeps you on your toes. We'll be fine. <laughs> what, again, what can possibly go wrong? Wow, it is so dark out there. I only know there's land there because the stars stop. Wow, that's a pretty nice pick. Chris has taken a screenshot. That's that's impressive. See, it's just, I'm just so impressed by the way this thing looks. I'm fairly easily impressed, obviously, but you know. <laughs> it doesn't take much, does it? Doesn't, it doesn't take much to impress me. Uh, right, so I tuned the ILS in. Uh, I'm guessing that's the same as normal if we got a Ooh. I've got an approach button I haven't got a v-lock yeah just push approach when you make that last turn okay it should 
you swap, swap you over to ILS if it doesn't just drag your nav source down to your an ILS one. So we are 16 miles from Lagra. We got a bit 2,900 feet, and then um, we're currently at 7,300. So we're descending quite nicely. It's looking quite nice out there. Yeah, competition closed, says White Fang. <laughs> After that screenshot of Chris's. Yeah, that's it. You can. Uh, nobody else needs to bother. Conversation. <laughs> 020 1558 Zulu. We'll be fine. Conversation ends. <laughs> Cockpit voice recorder. That's what I see. I was thinking CVR. Is that conversation? No, cockpit voice recorder. See, I'm getting used to the, the lingo. <laughs> it took a while. <laughs> That's why I haven't set me um, pressure. Uh, 2092. I should be 2994. Four. Where the hell's the thing for that one is now? Just to the left of the main display. Uh, really? It says arrow. Arrow, arrow set. set. Oh, I got it. your left mouse button and up, move up or down. Hang on, that's changing the speed bump. So I can... Ah, hang on. The joystick was in the way. <laughs> or is it should be 2994. There we go. That's it. Uh... Take it the green info appearing at the top of your stream about other people's landings are through FS Cloud. Yes, they are. Yeah, I couldn't see that because the, the the yoke was in the way. I think I can only see the barrow one. It's hidden by the yoke. Ah, so good at this. Wow, that looks nice lit up. Okay, well, there's a runway over there. Which I should now hopefully be turning towards soon. But according to my nav, I got a. Uh, might be 357. Oh no, no, could be right. Two miles to go. There we go. So now if I click approach. Did your main display change to ILS-1? No. Okay, then take your nav source, which is on your autopilot panel, and drag it down till you get ILS-1 on the main display. ILS-2. ILS-1. There you go. The plane should now fly you down to minimums. You've just got to worry about those pesky little things like speed and flaps. Mm, nope, it's turning me way past. So manual it is. Oops. Okay, gear down. It's taking me around in a circle, I think. I know where to, but... Don't come all the way back with the throttle. <laughs> <laughs> it does take some getting used to it. 
Okay, let's give it some flaps. Wow, that got dark. Wow, Roxy just come flying past me. Lovely sound. Oh, that does sound nice. Concern there slightly that I was going a bit too slow at 110 knots. Yeah, it's kind of borderline as slow as you want to be. <laughs> Sam's not impressed with the sound. Roxy is tearing the, taking the aerobatic approach. Yeah, he's obviously just a lot quicker on the approach than I am. Did you happen to see the uh, placard right below the clock? Uh, this aircraft not equipped for steep approach. Just saying. Yeah, yeah. Approaching three. the engine noise it sounds like I'm going faster than I am going around? I am. It's going a little bit too fast, a little bit too high. Oh, that's an angle. I should really. This approach isn't going well at all. Oh, blimey. Yeah, controlling the speed on a turbo prop. Yeah, you gotta always be a little bit ahead of the plane. Wow. Eh? Never mind, the, the Nile is right there if you need to put it down in an emergency. Perfect, says Narwood. <laughs> I think I need a refund on my ticket for that landing. It's just because it's a turbo prop, it is an instant response on the speed. So you bring the throttle back and it takes a while to spool down. And then you have to put the throttle up again because you slow down too quickly. So you, you, you're not in line with it. I don't get used to it. go in here. I don't know if this is a gate or not. There's one up there, I think. There are no gates. I think uh, Cartoon would be this busy. <laughs> Perfectly wasted. Yeah, it wasn't that bad a landing. It was just interesting. Oh, first time landing there at night in a plane you never landed before. 
Yeah. Can't ask for much. But they are better than jets. What happened? Says Sam. Ah. <sighs> I didn't say they're better than jets. Well, I might have done slightly. That sounds quite nice on the spool down. It's not what you said, it's the way I said it. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Okay, where is the parking brake? And engines are stopped. Your door. There we go. Just love that the cars driving down the roads headlights actually light up the road in front of them. It's just it's a small details with this, isn't it? Yeah, it's quite amazing. There you go. The plane goes into darkness. There's a plane taking off. Or started up. That does look quite nice. Right, so where's everybody else then? I am 10 miles from turning on to final. There we go. Roxy's over there. Roxy's doing a circuit around. Gaz is uh, parked up and probably in the uh, airport bar. And. Uh, Chris is on his way in, so let's have a look at see where he is in FS Cloud. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Chris is about to turn to final. Rox is about to come around as well to land. I really hope the next FJS dash is completely study level. I think they did say it was going to be study level. So, yeah, you almost want that complete. You've got to do everything in the right order. Oh, Roxy's gone. He's disappeared. He's off radar. I'm alive. <laughs> He's still alive. It's okay. Don't panic. He's coming in behind me. Ah! Oh, panic. So, yeah, this is where we are now. Uh, so, next Wednesday, no, oh, next Sunday, oh, two weeks on Sunday, uh, we will carry on from here, um, continuing our journey. Um, Wednesday night, though, we'll be back and uh, flying over in the Caribbean in um the mooney so more props on wednesday and uh, the next stream and flight then after that will be the following wednesday we'll be carry on again over in the caribbean um and uh, then come back here in two Three, weeks time seven. right chris what? is there so. but yeah this does look pretty damn epic at night you'll love that the real dash FMCs. Again, I'm happy to learn. I will have to learn the Airbus because um, I've sort of got the grips with every other FMC apart from the one in that E jet. That's just completely odd. Um, so we'll have to learn the um, the Airbus one. But yeah, it does look so nice at night. So don't forget then for one last time, if you're watching this live, um, competition details are 
uh, you have until the 16th of February uh, to post a screenshot in the Discord server uh, of a plane in a game. Um, so it doesn't have to be from a flight sim. The idea of the competition is to maybe get you into flight simming if you haven't been already. Um, so it can be in GTA, it could be in um, ETS2, it can be any game with a plane. So if you've got a favourite game or fav favourite shot or you want to be all arty and spend the next two weeks taking that perfect screenshot uh, of a plane, then do so. Post it in the Discord server in the competition section and you can be in a chance of winning that £65 Just Flight voucher. The winner will be announced two weeks today, if you're watching this live, uh, on the stream on the Sunday afternoon of the 16th. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, then you have until the 16th. And uh, the winner will then be posted um, somewhere uh, for YouTube people to be able to see it. I'll probably post it in Discord. So if you're entering in Discord, the winner will be posted in Discord as well after the stream. But very easy competition to enter. If you've got an awesome screenshot, uh, something like um, this one, which Chris has taken on this flight today. So Chris has taken that on the flight today. Um, that's pretty damn epic. So um, take a screenshot, post it in the competition section of Discord, put a reason there why that screenshot is so awesome. And uh, we will uh, judge your pictures and uh, post the winner or announce the winner on the stream uh, two weeks today. So we're just waiting on uh, Chris and Roxy to come on in now. They're on final. Well, Chris is. My uh, approach is uh, being publicly broadcast for my shame. Oh, and Chris is shaming himself live for the nation. So there we go. So here's uh, Chris's approach then. So in the same aircraft that I was in. see Roxy come on in. Yeah, really, really impressed with the plane. It certainly is nice. Cartoon's quite busy on a Sunday night, eh? Yeah, who'd have thought that? A little bit more straight than my approach. He hasn't got that close yet, Larwood. I was fine at this point. Well, ish. <laughs> it was when I got a lot closer that uh, things got tricky. So Chris is on his way in. Roxy is behind Chris. There he is. So the lighting at night does look pretty good. I love the tail light as well. Mm. Just shows off the logo a bit. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I'm a little worried that the glide slope indicator is not coming down. Mine didn't seem to do anything. Well, it caught it and then just took me off. Was it going to take me off running, running circles? Just not ideal, perhaps. Not really. I've got the localizer. Oh, there it goes, starting to drop. Mm. 
Was that gear down? Uh, flaps. Ah. Gear's been out for a while. I do like to try and stay ahead of this plane on approach. <laughs> and there we have glides that have captured tunnels. Yeah, I think a couple more flights in this plane. I think I'd, uh, it's just that getting used to a proper big turboprop where you've got that, not say lag, but you've got that gap between what you're doing and then what it's doing. Now, yeah, I just did exactly the same thing, too much off the throttle and then struggling to get it back again. Yes, you put it forward more and more and more so the speed picks up and then it's too much and you've got to come back off it again. So if you just join us, this is Chris's approach. I'm on the ground and we're watching uh, Chris come in and then Roxy's behind Chris. Yes, with my birthday tokens for next weekend. I'm sure the flight we do on the Wednesday um, after my birthday will be um, in something new again. <laughs> I'm running out of things to buy. I think I've almost got everything now. be able to see uh, if I move my position. Hang on. There we go. Right gear down. So here's Chris's uh, approach and here they are from my point of view, me being above the plane, plane being down there. Definitely a lot less dramatic than my approach. surprised well impressed actually how quickly it got dark <laughs> one minute it was like yeah glorious sunshine oh dark So many little bits of detail in this, it just looks so nice. That was a little rougher. Yeah, that's the same as I did. <laughs> I 
We'll blame the weather conditions at the airport then for that one. Right, then in comes Roxy. So Chris is turning off the taxiway. Roxy's on final. Oh, this thing stops quick. That it does. Right, switch over to taxi. So there we go, Chris is taxiing down. Rock is on the runway and we'll come off there. And uh, there I am. There's a plane there ready to depart. I don't know why he's just sat there. Whether he thinks I'm blocking his taxiway. So there's Chris. Gaz is taking off again. And Rox is uh, departing the runway. And Chris is about to drive into a plane. Back of an Egypt air. Uh, FS Cloud, we're on. So there we go, as Roxy uh, taxis up then. Uh, don't forget to enter the competition. Details are there uh, on the screen and it will be posted uh, at the bottom of the description if you're watching this uh, on YouTube. Competition closes on the 16th of February. Uh, good luck to everybody. Hopefully, uh, you get a few entries taking part. There could be uh, more competitions uh, to come in the future. Um, said so stream wise, you're watching this live. Next stream will be Wednesday. Uh, back carrying on uh, flight around the Caribbean. So, in the little Mooney on Wednesday. And then, uh, no streams this coming weekend. Uh, be back again the following Wednesday uh, with some more flight. So we will carry on from here in two weeks time, which will be the 16th. And uh, we'll head our way north, I'm guessing, from here um, in uh, a plane of who knows what it'll be, depending on the length of the journey. It could be jets, could be props, could be uh, one of them, one of those two, really. Not a lot of other choices, is there? <laughs> It's gonna be. A, it's gonna be. I think. Is there a third? No. It's gonna be a jet or a prop. Well, you've got gliders. You've got helicopters. Oh God! <laughs> we will arrange a helicopter stream um, at some point. That's going to be um, interesting for sure. Uh, right then. So my thanks to uh, first man down and uh, the bar bills on you. Uh, thanks, Gaz. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, to uh, to Chris. Thank you, Chris, for organising the route as always. Um, we'll catch you on Wednesday, sir. Thank you. That was uh, quite a pleasant flight. It was. I really enjoyed that. And to Roxy. Uh, thank you, Roxy. Uh, you're not here on Wednesday, are you? So we'll catch you, blimey, uh, two weeks' time then. Yes. Well, I hope you have a great birthday and great time away. And um, I'll see you when you get back. Absolutely. Well, it'll be the Friday, that Friday for trucking. Awesome. There we go. So, yes, carry on from here. Two weeks' time. Next stream, then, will be Wednesday evening at 7 o'clock. Uh, if you want to join us, check out the Discord server. Um, details will be posted there. Uh, until then, have a great afternoon and enjoy your Monday and Tuesday. Good luck on the competition if you enter. And uh, say goodbye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Goodbye. Goodbye.